The very first one was in 1961 from Yugoslavia. We sent out three teams, one to France, one to Italy, and one to Yugoslavia, and the other one top there of Mount Yastrzebach, having a very interesting time. And uh, a little later, in 1967, the 10th anniversary of the sky at night, I looked back at that 1961 Yugoslav eclipse. We had the idea of showing totality three times from successive stations, because it was total first in France, then in Italy, then in Yugoslavia, and then on, of course, into Russia. And we had Dr. Hugh Butler commenting from France. We had Colin Ronan stationed at Florence in Italy, and I was on the top of Mount Yastrobach in Yugoslavia, and Dr. Butler was the first speaker. Uh, things, as far as I was concerned, were very difficult because all my communications broke down, and I had to contact the camera crew in a roundabout manner because I don't speak Serbo-Croat. But the programme did come through, and we've got some of it on film. We're now in this wonderful French observatory in South France, and there's one of the television cameras mounted on a telescope in a dome, and I'm actually in a small room attached to that dome. Now there's the very last uh, bit of the crescent disappearing, and out of the window I can see that darkness is coming apace towards us. This is Trinity Bridge over the river, which runs through the centre of Florence, where at the moment there's a terrific sense of expectancy. The sun is three quarters, well, over three quarters eclipsed. There's a weird kind of light. Here at Fort Belvedere, which you see now, we are crowded together, watching in what looks like a sort of stormy atmosphere. It's very dramatic. Soon we'll be coming up to the last contact and to eclipse. Hello from Yugoslavia. This is Patrick Moore talking to you from what must be one of the most desolate spots in Europe. And we're having a most exciting time here. We're in a cloud at the moment, right on the top of this mountain, but we can see the sun. The main telescope out here, incidentally, is made with a, with a keyless-bat arrangement. The rotatable mirror at the top uh, catches the sunlight and shoots it down the tube. And there's the sun, the actual crescent, which I didn't think we'd see a few minutes ago. The clouds of, the clouds of the mist will roll away just at the right moment, but the great moment is coming up. And the main thing about a total eclipse, you know, is the suddenness with which, with which it all happens. Well, things continue to be rather exciting. The clouds roll back over the sun, and then they cleared again, just in time for us to see the diamond ring effect at the end. So I think we can say that that programme was a distinct success. And quite a bit was learnt from it too, because no one had ever tried to, to, uh, to televise a total eclipse of the sun before, and quite a lot was learnt about exposure times and things of that nature. I'm afraid we didn't see much of totality at that time, but photography improved, and in 1968 we went to Siberia for a very short totality. Five years later, before the African eclipse of 1973, we set up a demonstration to show that although the corona is at a very high temperature, there's not much heat there. I've got, first of all, a child sparkler. I'm going to put on a glove for this one. A child sparkler. And if I put that into my gas flame and I light it, we are going to get showers of sparks, which I hope we are. There we are. Now, I'm perfectly happy to put my hand near that and let the white-hot sparks fall on it, because although each spark is white-hot, it contains so little mass that it's quite harmless. Now, also here, I have got a red-hot poker. Or at least it should be red-hot. No, it isn't even that. But it's been in a gas flame for some time, and it is very hot. And I am assure you, I am just not going to grip that with my hand. I'd be very sorry if I did. But the temperature of this poker is much less than the temperature of each individual spark. But watch, when I plunge the poker into a bucket of water, tremendous hiss. Because although the temperature was lower, the actual amount of heat was very much greater than with the sparkler. And it's the same, you see, with the corona. The temperature is high, but there's not very much heat. At least I didn't burn my fingers, but please don't try that at home. It simply isn't safe. A few weeks later, I joined the good ship Monte Umbe to see my first eclipse from the sea. As soon as we got to sea, there was a great deal of activity on the Monte Umbe, with everybody busy preparing equipment and rehearsing experiments. Personally, I was hoping to hunt for comets during totality. On the morning of June the 30th, we were all rather worried by the hazy conditions. But the sky remained clear enough to give us a good view of the partial phase as it developed. Here's the sun as we saw it a short time before it disappeared. The moon has almost completely covered the disk, and by now, totality is only a matter of minutes away. We all had our cameras ready, and the temperature was dropping markedly. At this time, all over the ship, the tension was tremendous. We knew that we'd have no second chance. 
the light began to go down very rapidly and the moon shadow raced towards us over the sea. Within a few seconds from daylight, the whole ship was plunged into darkness. And there's the corona, and there's a brilliant prominence to the side of the sun. This is incredible, the best corona I think I've ever seen in my life. There's a strange, eerie quality about the light. Now we can see the diamond ring will be appearing in a minute. We've got orbit, there's the diamond ring, and the diamond ring has appeared. An incredible sight. There it is, the ring has appeared, the corona's vanished, and that is the end of this eclipse of the century. And by Jove, was it worth seeing? I didn't think then that a quarter of a century later, in 1998, I'd be on another ship, the Stellar Solaris, watching a total eclipse from the Caribbean. And this, I think, was the loveliest eclipse I'd ever seen. The light is fading fast. The totality is nearly on us. In the moment, you see the moon's shadow rushing across the sea. Approximate five seconds. Approximate five seconds. The sunlight coming through a valley on the moon's rim. The diamond ring. And totality is upon us. Now, and only now, it is safe to look direct to a telescope of Ibanquist. Wow! <laughs> One lovely red prominence. The almost at the top of the sun is seen from here. Prominences are huge columns of red hydrogen gas rising from the solar surface. There's one beautiful specimen there. You can notice that the image is shifting around slightly. That's because they're observing it from a moving ship deck. Glasses on. The corona spreading out from the eclipse sun. There are streamers in the corona. This is a kind of solar mineral type corona, quite different from the last one. There's a diamond ring. The corona fades from view. The moon shadow rushes away across the ocean. The sky lightens again. Nature seems to wake up as suddenly as she went to sleep. And you know, for a few magical moments, it was almost as though we'd been transported to another planet. Well, that was great. But August 11th, 1999, I was in Cornwall, under the clouds, saying things like, dear, dear, tut, tut, how annoying. And the only good pictures we got were those taken from a Hercules aircraft flying high above the clouds. There's a break. Look there, there's a break in the cloud. And there is the crescent sun. We're about 15 minutes from totality, and we've just had our first glimpse of the eclipse. And the cloud is there, it's drifting, and there may be hope yet. Look, you see there, the crescent sun, and not very long to go now. Oh, clouds, keep away, please. So terribly, and the light fades, and down here, we can't see it. From the aircraft, of course, we can, but from the sound, I fear we are going to miss the terribly. There's cloud out there, but you can see the light level going down, the temperature dropped, kind of eerie half-life, not like an ordinary dawn or dusk at all. But I very much fear, and here we don't see the corona, but of course from the aircraft we can, and the last slip of the sun vanishes, and then there's totality, the diamond ring, and there the lovely corona, a maximum type corona, beautifully symmetrical, and that is the sight of a lifetime. And from down here, sadly, we are still under total cloud, and we're missing it. The sky has gone dark, and the entire landscape is altered now. And that is totality, lasted for two precious minutes. And down here, all we can see, I fear, is gloom. A few scattered breaks on the cloud, but unfortunately, nowhere near us. A good eclipse for those who saw it.